Hey everyone, it's Blar, and in this video I want to talk to you about the movement speed penalty that comes with equipping body armors and shields in Path of Exile and what circumstances we might want to consider to either have a body armor equipped or not to have it equipped. So with that being said, let's get started. So in case you didn't know, in Path of Exile, uh, all body armors have a movement speed penalty. You can see this uh, by essentially going to your character select screen here, right? If you unequip a body armor, you'll see nothing about sort of movement speed increases or decreases. You throw on a body armor. You'll see that I have a negative modifier now. If I throw on a shield, because shields also have a movement speed penalty, you will see it uh, changes a little further. Uh, finally, if I throw on like something like boots that has a positive modifier, you'll see that in the character sheet here, you can see what my movement speed is. Now, this comes up a lot in speedrunning, where the consideration is, hey, you know, I wanna go fast, how do I go fast? Should I wear a body armor? Should I not wear a body armor? And the general rule of thumb is you want to avoid trying to wear a body armor, if you can, to avoid the penalty. So what exactly is this penalty? Well, as I've mentioned, all body armor starts have a movement speed penalty. And when I say body armor, I mean the chest slot, right? Uh, the general rule is that pure armor and armor ES chests have a 5% movement speed penalty. All other bases only have a 3% movement speed penalty. There's one exception to this rule, which is the first pure armor base, a plate vest. It's usable at level one and it only has a 3% penalty instead of the 5% penalty like you'd expect. Shields also have a penalty, but we're not really gonna go over shields too much because the circumstances in which you'd use a shield in speedrunning would either be such that your main skill requires a shield, such as shield crush or a spectral shield throw, or your shield charging. And then finally, there's another consideration where you might want the shield for its defensiveness. Um, but if you're making that consideration or it's one of your primary skills or it's your primary required for your primary travel skill, the movement speed penalty is pretty much irrelevant. Um, so that's why we're not really gonna talk about the shield speed penalty very much. So now that we know that there's a penalty, right? And Knowing that if we don't have a body armor equipped, we will potentially gain time over having a body armor equipped because we'll move faster without an armor. What circumstances exist when we should use a body armor versus not? Well, there are a number of considerations which pretty much make it so that wearing a body armor is always going to be more va valuable in terms of speed than not wearing a body armor. Um, and so right off the bat, all of this discussion really f sort of focuses around the early acts. By the time you get to sort of like late act three, act four, you're going to want to have a body armor on anyways, one to relieve socket pressure and two for its increased defenses. So when we're talking about sort of the body armor implication, we're really talking about the early acts. So with that in mind, the first thing we're going to talk about is if the only way you can get an onslaught link in is through your body armor slot, absolutely equip it because having that movement speed buff from onslaught will far outweigh the movement speed penalty. Another thing you can think about, right, is if a body armor is the only way you can fit a travel skill in early, such as dash or frost blink, 100% put the body armor on. Again, likewise, you know, if it's a body armor is the only way you can get your primary DPS skill on a three link um, and you're using a different skill to proc onslaught, you're definitely want to put that primary skill on the three link in your body armor because the increase in speed you're going to get from a 3L, say, for example, on like the boss fights that you need to do will outweigh sort of the penalty you get from having the uh, body armor equipped. Another thing you want to think about, right, is uh, if it allows for a significant damage boost from sort of non-damaging skills. For example, something like Ancestral Protector or Herald of, Herald of Ash, Skitterbots. Um, even though a Protector is a 
uh, damaging skill. What I'm really referring to here when I say non-damaging is the fact that Protector gives you a 20% more attack speed buff, which will increase your overall damage, right? So, finally, uh, another consideration we have, right? Similarly to the damage boost, whether or not it's through this, like the primary DPS skill itself by adding an additional link or by providing additional utility through something like a reservation, um, we also have the consideration of, you know, is it going to provide a significant increase in travel speed? Say, for example, linking Leap Slam to faster attacks. Uh, very obvious. If that's the only way you can do it through a body armor, absolutely do it. Or if the only way you can get something like Blood Rage or a secondary movement skill uh, to enable something like the Leap Slam Frost Blink combo or the Smoke Mind Flame Dash combo, you're going to want to be able to do that. And finally, you know, if you have something like the Art of the, the Gladiator node uh, spec where you ignore the movement speed penalty, then yeah, just throw an armor on. It doesn't matter, right? So really then, you're going to use a body armor anytime the added damage, utility, or speed you'd get from wearing that chest through sort of the sockets that you gain access to or the gems you gain access to would outweigh the penalty in terms of improving your speed. And that's going to happen pretty frequently. So, it typically, having a body armor on is going to be the better play in a lot of circumstances than not. Really then, the only time you shouldn't really be wearing a body armor as we're sort of talking about this is when there's not really anything to offset the penalty that you're going to be incurring, right? So, the, here are some other circumstances where we might use it. Now... Here is one where it's hard to know early or not whether or not you should equip this. I kind of think it is worthwhile, especially since the game is way more dangerous now than it used to be. Uh, back before 315, you know, you kind of used to be able to like face roll the early axe and not really worry about mob damage at all. That is not really the case anymore. And so if mob damage and dangerousness without a chest armor makes you play more conservatively or defensively then you might want to consider just throwing the chest armor on so you can play more aggressively to clear the zone quicker or to avoid dying uh, in particular zones is actually a really good idea for example like mud flats climb or vol ruins like those zones are like mega damage zones and as a result you know if you're worried about your HP and playing defensively, you're just not going to be able to clear the zone as quickly. Uh, I mentioned this a little earlier, but essentially by the time you get to late Act 3, where you can start dropping 4Ls, you definitely want a chest piece on, especially if you get a 4L. Like, that one is pretty self-evident. Um, but mainly, though, by the time you get here, it's because you're going to have too much socket pressure, uh, because you're going to have access to curses, other reservations... And just generally speaking, there'll be more utility on the table where you'll need more sort of sockets to make the most out of that utility. Finally, you know, we have also the defensive concerns. Uh, sort of as we get to this point, mobs get spookier and spookier and spookier. And then, you know, we get stuff like determination, which we probably won't equip right around Act 3, Act 4, maybe in Act 5, Act 6. But, you know having a good base armor if we can to go with determination or evasion makes things significantly easier in those acts for you to survive one thing you can consider is body armor cycling and you'll see someone like tai tai do this uh pretty frequently for example if they're he's in town um and doing sort of like that long walk in act three when you have to go to the slums sort of from entering from the city of Sarn or when you're returning to go open up the sewers you know you can take off your chest uh just for a little bit of a marginal time game it is a time game and it's something that you can do uh i wouldn't necessarily bother with this if you have other more important things to do like equipping gems instead because to do sort of like the body armor cycling uh you can just put it back in your inventory, but most people just will leave it on their mouse hover and use a move only key to navigate through. So it really just depends whether or not you want to do the body armor cycling. It can be uh, a bit of a time gain, but this would be something I'd only consider doing like when you're really, really trying to min max and get the absolute best time you possibly can. 
So, uh, wearing a body armor, right? Uh, what sort of armors are good for us to wear in a speedrunning context? Well, typically armor, armor evasion and invasion bases will give us the most bang for our buck in terms of defenses. Uh, just because of the nature of how damage comes in as a speedrun, these will be the most effective. Uh, evasion ES and armor ES are decent, right? Pure ES is pretty poor for speedrunning just due to the fact that often you'll be suffering a lot of chip damage, meaning you will never have your uh, ES up to benefit your EHP, or you'll be running something like Blood Rage, which drains it anyways. Uh, as a result, you know, you don't really get the benefit that you want from the ES, and it's less valuable than something like Armor, Armor Evasion. Obviously, ES becomes more valuable as a mechanic if you have something like Ghost Shrouds, but typically you'll only really be picking up Ghost Shrouds in like an Act 10 run, and if you're pathing over that way already, right? Nonetheless, though, despite everything I just said, you know, in a speedrunning or leveling context, oh, beggars really can't be choosers so we're just gonna take whatever we can get in terms of bases especially if it has the right like links uh otherwise you know might have good stats outside of like the base type it's on or it might be you know like a 4l when we don't have a 4l already so what are sort of the time implications of wearing a body armor versus not well at the end of the day really the time implication isn't that much per zone in terms of a movement speed penalty. It's maybe a couple to a few seconds, depending on zone length. But, you know, one of the things to keep in mind is, like, this also implies that if you were able to play more aggressively with a body armor than not, you know, you might be able to equal out that time over that zone. Likewise, if you read the layout better, better XP or looting decision will likely result in sort of having the same time game as you would without having a body armor on. So in other words then, you know, not wearing armor is sort of a relatively free way of gaining speed, um, but it's not necessarily the most impactful way of gaining speed. There are other things that are going to be way more impactful in terms of your overall speed. So wearing or not wearing a body armor really is sort of like a finishing touch consideration in terms of trying to improve your speed. If you can avoid wearing a body armor, great, but don't do so at the cost of other mechanisms which influence your speed, such as added damage, utility, or in, you know increased traversal speed, right? Thus, given everything that we've talked about, here's an alternative rule of thumb for you to think about as it relates to body armors. Essentially, wear body armor anytime it'll improve your speed, whether it's through increasing clear damage, giving you onslaught, allowing access to second travel skill, allowing better utility skills such as auras, uh, links for your travel skill, and just pretty much anything that increases your speed, throw that chest armor on. Don't wear a chest if it wouldn't provide a meaningful benefit to outweigh the penalty. And that's what it sort of comes down to in the end. So hopefully this video has been helpful and thank you for watching.